What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November, heading into the month of December in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about NEO stock and why I think there's a good possibility here here that it could break upwards based on this technical break that I'm seeing right now. And I also want to break down UGAS, DGAS, and natural gas because there is some research I did today and I want to share with you guys that research. But before we do get into this, all I ask from you is to go down below, hit that like button if you enjoy the content here, if you find it valuable, and also consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me about the stock market and consider joining our our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group, which are linked down below in the description box. So let's get into it right now, starting off here with the good old SP 500, guys, the 500 largest publicly traded US companies. With about 53 minutes left in the session today, and yes, I'm recording this video a bit early today, this is up $19.50, up 0.63 percent and we hit yet again another all-time high at $3,131.65. And the analysis that we did on Friday and in yesterday's video, it ended up panning out. It ended up coming into fruition in today's session. And that analysis was pretty much, um, you know, that this was a dip buy in the S&P, that we were potentially going to go higher in the S&P, hit a higher high, hit an all-time high if we were to break that 50 SMA of resistance. And we all saw in yesterday's video, the futures market was up. If you guys remember, the S&P was up 7, 8 points. So I was saying that the S&P, if the futures were to hold where they were yesterday, would which they did, right? This thing would probably gap up in the morning, which was this morning, and that's exactly what ended up happening, right? So we got that massive gap up, the breakout, the continuation of the uptrend, the higher low confirmation um, from the previous. And we got that all-time high, like I stated. So the S&P is looking extremely bullish right here, guys. If we go back to that one day, one minute, it's very clear that it really hasn't done much after it hit that all-time high. It's pretty much been consolidating here, but that's honestly a good sign, right? That's a good sign that the S&P could be gearing up here for uh, the next leg up, honestly. It could be gearing up for another pop here, maybe another half percent to a one percent pop, before it either consolidates and sells off or continues to go up again. But remember, guys, this thing's not going to go up every day, day in, day out. There's going to be a day where it pulls down. Like we saw last week, it saw two days of pulling down. So if we run up another day or two here, two gap ups, a gap up, another half percent gap up, whatever it may be, we're probably going to see another retracement um, either later this week or maybe even next week for the this thing to cool off a bit. But nonetheless, it's looking extremely bullish right now, up 0.6%. And who knows, there is another 50 minutes left in the market today. Maybe we do start to see another leg up push later in the day today. And maybe we even go and test another all-time high, maybe even hit another all-time high in these next 50 minutes of trading. And obviously, if you guys are watching this video right now, you know whether or not we did hit an all-time high, or maybe we even sold off at the end of the market. So going over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, guys, this one's up 150 points right now, 148.02 to be exact, up 0.5%. And just like the S&P, this thing gapped up. We saw a nice run in the first hour of the market. Then from that point, on to right now, we've really just been consolidating around twenty-eight thousand um, bucks. Really, that's just where we've been we've been consolidating, right? And if we go back to the twenty-day, one-hour chart, and just like the S and P guys, we talked about this on Friday um, and in yesterday's video. You know, we gapped up above that fifty SMA, and we saw how the futures were gapping up in Sunday's um, session when the futures market opened at six p.m. Eastern Standard. So that kind of gave me the notion that, okay, futures are up here. That means if the futures hold this nice gap up, we'll be gapping above that 
the SMA. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, the Dow is probably going to open higher. Um, and that's exactly what ended up happening, right? We gapped up, very bullish here, higher low confirmed. We didn't hit an all time high, guys, like the SP, but this all time high could be hit tomorrow, which is at $28,090.21. If we do see another nice day in these markets, which honestly, I could definitely see another day, um, especially with optimism surrounding the trade war and all that good stuff that we've been seeing out there. So that's what the Dow is looking like right now, guys. Um, if we break it down on the five day, five minute, you can see it's looking quite bullish. Same with um, the S&P. Now, if we go to the NASDAQ, this one's up the most, guys. This one's up an impressive 1% today, up 84 points here. And look at that poll, guys. This thing is insane. It went from 8,300 all the way up to 8,375 in the matter of one hour. That's pretty impressive, right? And if we pull this 20-day chart here to see what it's looking like, you know, we can see the massive bull move that we saw. Again, that nice pull here and the gap up, right? We saw the gap up yesterday. Um, we broke above the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA as we gapped up when that futures market opened. And that, again, just like the S&P and the Dow, that move gave me the notion that we could be seeing a nice, healthy green day today, especially if those futures um, were to stay green heading into the market open today. And obviously, that ended up happening, and we saw a massive, massive rally here. We didn't hit an all-time high, right? The all-time high is about 15 points away here, but I wouldn't be surprised if we hit that all-time high yet, uh, tomorrow. I was about to say yesterday, guys. Tomorrow or the next day, or maybe even later today in the next 30 40 minutes. Who knows, guys? So keep an eye on that. Again, S&P at the all-time high, but the Dow, the NASDAQ, they did not quite yet. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts about the markets right now? Are you buying right now? Are you chilling on the sidelines? Are you loaded up on cash? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. Let me know down below in the comment section, and let's talk about what I personally did today in terms of my trading. So the first trade I made today was trimming some profits for my Chipotle Mexican Grill position, ticker symbol CMG. And for those of you guys that have been following the channel um, for a week or two at this point, you know that I've been swing trading Chipotle Mexican Grill. So if we pull up this 10-day chart, I got in during this period, I believe. Um, it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was here. I think it might have been one of these days, but my average cost is around 750 bucks, right? I scaled in during this time period, and those shares right now, guys, Guys, the ones that I sold, I made about a 4% profit on them because I got in at again at about 750. And if we go to today's movement, I actually ended up exiting half of those shares at about 784 bucks as we started to aggressively run up today, right? And you can see this stock's up almost 2% today, guys, $14. So quite a good day for Chipotle Mexican Grill. And my initial plan was to get out of the share. Um, completely under this 180 SMA. So I didn't do that quite yet because there is some more room to run, but I do feel comfortable again, trimming half of the position here, taking about a 4% profit on the shares. And again, looking to unload the rest of the shares, especially if we break that 180 SMA, which honestly I see potential um, in that happening. I could definitely see that happening over these next couple of days. So locked in that 4% gain on Chipotle. In terms of day trading today, guys, um, I was eyeing up, uh, what was it, TQQQ, but honestly, I missed the move uh, because it ran up so quick in the morning and then it really just consolidated for the rest of the day. And this is actually a, an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. It goes up three times what the NASDAQ's going up. So if you like trading individual indexes, you can do that trading, you know, TQQQ for the NASDAQ, you know, if you want to trade the S&P, you can do SPXS. If you want to short the S&P or XPX or SPXL, if you want to go long the S&P, these are good options for you, right? But for me, again, I missed the move, so I didn't end up day trading that. So really, 
all I ended up doing today was profiting on CMG and then cutting out of my McDonald's position, which I've been swinging here for about a week or two, um, just because of the technical break below 192.50 to about 193 bucks, right? I ended up cutting that, and uh, honestly, guys, this is looking bearish to me in my opinion. Um, this could potentially fall down back to the 180s based on the technicals here strictly, and again, based on this 193 break. So the fact that I was in around 192, 193, I didn't really lose anything at this point, right? I lost like 0.2, 0.3%, nothing crazy. I just feel more comfortable unloading those shares as the trend is not in my favor at this point. If I were in the stock, I'd be fighting the trend, and that's kind of going against one of my main rules when swing trading, which is don't fight the trend. Do not fight the trend, right? So McDonald's, cut that. Chipotle took the profits. Um, that's pretty much all I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. So now let's get into Neo stock, guys, because this is one that I'm holding in my long term account, right? You all know that. Well, probably most of you guys know that. And it's actually piquing my interest for my swing and day trading account. So let's pull it up and talk about what is going on today with the stock. It's currently priced at $2.08 up. 14 cents on the day, 15 cents now, and climbing up 7.73% right now. So Neo stock is doing exceptionally well today. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I saw a technical break here that is quite attractive, in my opinion, and that could yield a lot more upside if the stock continues to break out from this technical break that I saw this morning. And let's get into that right now. Now, you can't really see it on the four hour chart, but if I zoom in and dig in a bit more on this chart and we go to that 20 day, one hour time frame, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about, right? So we can see a clear level of support at $2 right now on NEO and a clear level of resistance at $2.40. So, what happened last time we broke $2? We ran up to $2.49, which was a nice gap fill of about 18%. Right, so now that we're breaking that level again, I'm looking to see if Neo could potentially redo that pattern to see if it can repeat that pattern. Right, and right now we're actually at a point in the chart where we're reversing. This is a beautiful reversal pattern that we're seeing here on Neo. Right, from the 249 peak down to this low at about 168. Notice how these moving averages, the 180 and the 50 SMA, both of them were acting as resistance levels, right? We also saw a bearish cross, meaning the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. So this was really bearish during this time period here, really from the beginning of November, kind of towards the middle of November. But since the middle of November, the 15th, 16th, 17th, there's, there's, there's kind of been a shift in the stock here. We've slowly found a bottom at 170, right? And we've been making higher lows and higher highs since then, and we've actually been breaking out of those moving average resistance levels and holding them as supports, right? And we're also getting a bullish cross, which we actually got um, on Friday in the afternoon and heading into today's session, where the 50 SMA is crossing above that 180 SMA. And we also got a break above the resistance that we were at, I believe, Friday morning at 207. We just broke out of that, hitting a higher high, right? And again, we're breaking breaking into the channel between 2 and 240. So this is all kind of formulating together and it's looking good in my opinion for a breakout, right? We're slowly getting the breakout here, but what I really want to see before entering a position in NEO is a continuation, right? Tomorrow, if the momentum continues, let's say we gap up into the 210s, 211, 212. At that point, guys, I could definitely see NEO continuing to rally here. That's kind of the momentum we need to see as well as some volume kicking in here into the stock, right? If we just look at the volume right now, if I kind of just uh, just spread this apart a bit, Neo, you can see 32 million volume right now. So if that starts to kick up a bit, 
that starts to get higher and of course it's it's kind of high as it is now if it ramps up even more this could definitely result in the stock breaking out popping up to two dollars and forty cents so that's kind of my thoughts here on neo stock i'd love to know what you guys have to think down below in the comments section now let's get into natural gas you gas and d gas because today guys was an absolute bloody sight for natural gas bulls and for the you gas holders out there so let's get into natural gas first and foremost slash ng f20 is what we're following right now the january futures and you you guys can see down 13 cents, down 4.9% at the time that I'm recording this video, which is insane, right? If you guys watched my video yesterday, we actually talked about the gap up that natural gas had. Very, very positive for the bulls here. We gapped up from 270 up to 275, but we quickly dumped after that all the way back down to 270. And what I was saying in my video yesterday, guys, remember this, right? If you guys remember, this let me let me know down below in the comments but what i was saying is if natural gas were to hold 270 and rally back up you guys was definitely going to be the play for today right at this point that's very bullish if we were to test 274 again which is where we gapped up in terms of the futures and especially if we were to break that level right but i also said if 270 was broken to the downside d gas was going to be the player of of the day and what happened guys well natural gas ended up breaking 270 quite aggressively and we actually got all the way down to 260 we broke 260 and now we're testing two dollars and 58 cents which also happens to be a strong level of support so the quick gap up yesterday it did not last you guys and uh, natural gas ended up crashing through the floor guys now on a technical level uh technical basis I'll be watching 258, 257, which we held a couple weeks ago. Um, we actually held that level uh, about a month ago as well. So this is a very, very strong technical spot for natural gas right now, $2.58. And if we go over here to you guys, guys, you can see the abysmal performance today, down $2, down 14% as of right now, which is very, very bad, right? One thing that I'm looking at here is the 13, 1275, $13 level of support. But then again, guys, this doesn't really matter uh, a lot because if natural gas just dumps even further, this support won't really mean anything, but still it's worth watching to see 13 bucks, 1290. Does this hold heading into tomorrow's session for you guys? That's pretty critical. Um, rather not extremely critical, but it's something worth watching if you're doing some technical analysis. And of course, on the flip side, DGAS was up 14.2% today, is up 14.2% today, and climbing up almost 6 dollars So tomorrow, guys, if natural gas breaks 258 I'd expect a lot more blood in the water. DGAS will probably run up here in the short term. But let's say we start to fill the gap back up to 260, 261. That's going to be quite positive for you guys. So what ended up causing this drop today? Let's talk about that right now. So I did some research online today about natural gas on this specific website called natgasweather.com. So we can see this kind of graph here showing the mild trends of weather, the milder trends of weather um, compared to the 30-year normal, as well as kind of just the forecast from 12 hours ago and 24 hours ago. And you can see that we're more mild right now, um, especially heading into the early months of December. That's kind of how this trend is looking. And if we look at this other little excerpt right here, one weather system will exit the north northeast early Monday while a new weather system arrives into the west and plains with rain and 
snow and chilly lows of teens to 30s. Ahead of this western U.S. system, mild high pressure will build across the southern and eastern U.S. the next few days with highs of 40s and 50s from the Great Lakes to the northeast Monday through Wednesday with 60s and 70s from Texas to the mid-Atlantic coast. The west system will eject across the Great Lakes and northeast Wednesday with areas of rain and snow. Another system will track into the west for the second half of the week. Overall, there's going to be light early week national demand in terms of natural gas, you know, this this early week from Monday, Tuesday to Wednesday. Then it's going to be increasing from Thursday to Saturday. So that kind of explains why, you know, natural gas is, is kind of tanking here in the short term, the milder weather. And we've been talking about this over the past couple of natural gas videos, guys. We saw withdrawal last week of 94 BCF billion cubic feet. And I also looked deeper into that, that a lot of people expect this week's withdrawal to be around 60 billion cubic feet. So it's going to be less, which just goes to show that the demand this week wasn't that strong due to really the, the, the milder weather that we've been experiencing over the past one to two weeks. Because remember, this natural gas uh, report, it reports the storage for the previous week's um, storage. So it's not going to be really on time, real time. It's going to be delayed by one week. So overall, guys, that's kind of my perspective here. Those are kind of my thoughts and some things to consider. Milder weather than expected. It's warmer than expected, but it is supposed to get colder here in the middle of December from what I was reading and, of course, later on in December as well. So in the short term here, natural gas, um, it probably has a bit more downside, especially if we uh, report a weak withdrawal this upcoming week, which is very, very possible. So I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below in the comment section. Now, let's just rapid fire, go through a bunch of stocks and and ETFs, not really a bunch, but just a couple that I'm watching right now in the market in these next couple of days, ones that I'm personally looking to trade. So one that I really like here, guys, is going to be obviously Chipotle Mexican Grill. This is one that I'm really liking, very bullish, bullish cross here. We're seeing it. Obviously, we talked about it earlier in this video. I trimmed off some profits, but I still see a lot of potential here in the short term with Chipotle Mexican Grill grill, right? If we break that 180 SMA, there's a lot of potential for this thing to get back to 830 and maybe even 860 to test that all-time high. So from where it is right now up to 830, guys, 6% in the tank up to 860. That's around 9% profit potential in the tank. Another stock that I'm watching, and I know a lot of you guys are watching as well, um, is going to be Tesla stock, guys. TSLA, pretty weird day today for Tesla stock. It ran up, I believe, this morning. Um, Pre-market, actually, it ran up. This is really due to the, uh, you know, 200K signups for that cyber truck. We actually got updated uh, an updated tweet that it's at 200K. I don't know if it's uh, more now. I haven't really checked since that 200K tweet, but I'm guessing those signups for the Cybertruck ended up gapping the stock up, and honestly, I was expecting that. Um, you know, we, we saw about a 4% gap up here, but ultimately, that ended up selling off right to where it was at the close, really, on Friday, which is kind of interesting, right? So we saw the 4% gap up, 4% fall um, on Tesla stock, so am I buying this up? Maybe tomorrow. Honestly, guys, maybe tomorrow this is worth looking into, especially if we start to see more momentum pushing us back up to that uh, level that we got to this morning, maybe around 340, right? 345. If we were to break that level, that's where I'd probably be buying Tesla right now. One, one negative thing that I'm seeing here is we did get rejected by the moving averages at a lower high. So ideally, again, like I said, um, if we were to break that level, that's where I'd probably be buying Tesla 
ticker symbol TSLA. Johnson & Johnson is another one that we talked about yesterday, and this is tuning up for a potential buy in the morning tomorrow, in my opinion, right? We got the gap up to 138. We got the pull down this morning, and we actually solidified a higher low this morning on top of that 50 SMA, and we've been slowly climbing up since then, which is really positive for the bulls out here, right? If we close like this, that will be even more positive for the bulls, and that will probably lead me to take a position in my account, in my swing account, in tomorrow's session. So Johnson & Johnson, definitely watching this one. Let's break down gold very quickly, guys, because honestly, I haven't broken down gold, uh, broken down gold, gold in a while here. So gold down 0.6% today, down 9 bucks. And ever since these markets have been killing it, guys, gold has been falling, right? We saw the fall from 1560 down to about 1450. Now it's going to be interesting what gold's going to do because you can see 1450 here, old resistance from a couple months ago. That's the support that we should hold, in my opinion, right? We should hold this. We held it a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago to be exact, on the 11th of November. So if we were to hold this, hey, maybe we run back up to that 180 SMA. That could be a short term play in JNUG, right? But if we break this, that's going to be a very bad technical break for the Bulls. Good for the Bears, bad for the Bulls, right? We could be push pushing down to a lower low at that point, either at 1440, 1430, 1420, or even lower than that, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Gold, um, it's been quite boring, but if you guys saw my M1 Finance uh, portfolio video, I actually bought some GLD in that portfolio. And if you guys didn't check out that update video I uploaded earlier today, that's going to be linked down below. And it's definitely a video you should watch right after this video. If you guys want to see what I'm holding in my individual stock portfolio on M1 Finance that I started building a couple months ago in the beginning of July. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. And don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as our Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below as well as the Strive Smart merch. And before you click off the video, don't forget, go check out that portfolio update video. My portfolio is up 15% since July when I started it. So go check it out. Let me know what you guys think. And um, yeah, thanks again for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Peace out.